Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a book called Cat Skull by Mile Yen Tay. Uh, this is his debut novel, and this book actually won Best Literary Work and Book of the Year at the Singapore Book Awards for 2024. Um, but I didn't know that, I don't think. I think I just saw it at the library, and I decided to check it out based on the description on the back. And I'm really glad I did because this is a five-star book for me and one that really impacted me and was a page turner. So I definitely recommend it. And I want to chat a little bit about the key experiences and themes that Mile is so adept at capturing. Um, as well as read you one of my favorite quotes from the book and kind of describe why I think this is such an enrapturing and compelling novel. So I'll start off with giving you a little bit of the premise and the plot for the book. The story follows Ram, and Ram is our protagonist. He's the first person narrator. He's probably 17 or 18. He's studying for his A-levels. He's Singaporean living in Singapore. And I think what Mile does so well in this novel is he's able to capture a couple different feelings that I think most people can relate to in a way that doesn't feel contrived or artificial. One of those is what it feels like to be an adolescent, maybe on the cusp of adulthood, and feel lost but also stifled and just that sense of almost impending doom or just not being able to visualize for yourself what the future might look like um, and that kind of angst permeates throughout Ram's point of view but in a way that I don't think is annoying or artificial. The second thing that I think Mile captures really well is something that I've been relating to more recently, which is a feeling of knowing that you're surrounded by injustice, but not knowing what to do about it, or feeling like there's nothing you could do that would make a difference. And living in a constant state of cog cognitive dissonance. And I think this applies to every country. It applies to Singapore, but I think it applies to every single country, every society, humanity today, which is we have in many ways a very deeply unjust or inequitable system that as citizens just going about our day-to-day -day lives, we can't really do much about and also in many ways serves us. And so I think those two themes are what really intellectually grabbed me about this book is that feeling of just pressure and not being able to see the bigger aperture or have a bigger aperture because you're a young person who basically is just being told what to do or how to behave by your family, your community, your school all the time. And then also being able to very clearly see injustice or see things that are messed up all around you but then have everyone else because they've matured and are adults just ignore it or not know what to do or not even think to do anything about it so these themes really come through in the plot the plot is that ram starts to be unable to do nothing about these various injustices that he sees happening in Singapore and it comes it comes about in a very natural way I don't think he's like ideologically driven or even intellectually driven it really comes out of like his soul and his emotional core he takes on this vigilante status he calls himself the Daitya which I think comes from Tamil culture it's like a demon and he basically goes about trying to right various wrongs. So one of the things that happens is there are some junior college or JC boys who are practicing their martial arts on foreign workers, so going around beating up foreign workers. Um, another thing that happens in the book is a foreign domestic worker is found dead because in Singapore the, they're live-in foreign domestic workers and this one wasn't given the appropriate like food shelter water everything from her employer he like learns about these various activities like these various incidents 
and he just literally becomes a vigilante. Like he goes in, it happens throughout the book, there are these different occurrences where he goes in and he either tries to like save the person or kill someone or expose someone. So that's kind of like the through line, but there's so much more going on at the same time. Um, I think an important component of the book and the way Miles tells Ram's story is the relationships that he has with a few key characters. And I think Miles does a really good job of showing those relationships without telling. So for example, one relationship I want to talk about is Cass, Ram's friend, who he feels a strong connection with because she also is a kind of outsider, has a lot of family issues at home, uh, and has an abusive father. And he connects with her, and he really relies on the re that relationship because he thinks she's the only one who can really get where he's coming from in all of his frustrations. But then later, you see that his it's a mistake that he's projected this sameness onto her because actually they're not alike and she's very set up for success because she did really well or she's doing really well in school and she has financial means to leave the country. And so building up that relationship as a source of validation and comfort to Ram for it then to just break apart later in the book was extremely well done in my view. Another important relationship for Ram that I think is really formative is his uncle Arun, who he sees around, who has passed away, and that's where you're kind of first introduced, I think, to uh, the way that race is talked about in the book. So obviously race is a huge part of why Ram feels trapped, but I like how the author shows microaggressions or shares things that Ram thinks because it feels really natural. I think it's natural. Maybe someone who is from this background, who is Singaporean Indian, can tell me like, is it overdone? Is it played up? But to me, it feels really authentic and it feels really natural. And it's not like the main point of the book. It's a feature of his identity. Therefore, it affects his existence, which I think is a very rewarding way to depict how race influences Ram. So back to Uncle Arun, I mean, Ram talks about Uncle Arun a lot, so you know that he's important to him. His downfall is that he was an alcoholic, but before that, he was a very successful lawyer. And when Uncle Arun was drunk and got sent to jail, Ram talks about how his parents would do nothing but defend him and say that he was it was unfair how he was being targeted um, et cetera, et cetera. But then after Uncle Arun gets disbarred, they change their tune. So instead of this being like an injustice, they start talking about how Ram and his brother have different standards applied to them. So the quote that I wanted to read is about Uncle Arun. The first man in his family to go to college, to become a practicing lawyer, a model citizen, now gone because he didn't control himself. So there's this pressure and Ram feels that his parents view him like they're so stressed about what could happen to him as a brown person in Singapore. And he says, Logan and I were always one drunken mistake from losing everything. So I think Uncle Arun was very much a father figure to Ram and having that happen really impacted Ram and made him just confused. I don't even think he's able to articulate an attack or a defense anything. I think he's just doesn't know how to process it. Um, there is one chapter where he talks about how people in Singapore always ask, where are you from? So the quote is, when asked, I say I'm third generation Singaporean. I don't know why the Chinese students in my class are never asked how long their families have been in Singapore. So I feel like race is obviously pervasive through this book, but I just think it's done in a really natural way which was successful for me. I would love to hear what Malay Singaporeans, Indian Singaporeans think. Um, but I, I, I feel like, from what I've read on Goodreads, a lot of them resonate with that. Anyway, that's just a small part of the book. I think a another key underlying tension for RAM is the Singapore education system. And in some ways, the authors 
having more of a commentary on that than anything else. And I, I feel like there's almost a connection being made from like the cruelties that happen in the Singapore education system to like the injustices that happen out in society that then Ram tries to correct, just in the sense of like, everyone has to go along with it. The school is the authority. There's nothing you can do. So he talks about like a public caning, which I think happen in the childhoods of like most of my Singaporean friends, if not all, like the discipline master, like caning as a punishment for the kid in front of everyone. So corporal punishment is one thing, but like the shame and the mockery that happens, I think is like very damaging to a young person to be publicly caned, like at assembly in front of everyone. Um, he also talks about being divided into different lecture halls. So like lecture hall uh, when getting ready for uh, future planning. So like lecture hall one is for folks going to Oxbridge with like really good grades and he's in lecture hall six. So he's basically in the like mess ups lecture hall and how being like separated into these categories of you're going to be successful all the way down to your uh, F up is, yeah, it's not something that's like commented on, but it's shown and the reader can draw their own conclusion. But anyway, even just describing these things almost makes it lose its power. You really should just read the book. It's something that's felt, not something that I received in an informative kind of way. That sound you're hearing is my cat meowing. The cat really wants to go outside, but he's not allowed because he doesn't like his harness and he can't go outside unless he's on the harness. So I think the reason I really enjoyed this book so much is because of the writing style. It's very crisp. It's all in first person. It's short sentences. And I just think that to write concisely in that style is a rare gift and also requires a lot more effort than to write in a very ver verbose way. It's also micro chapters, I would say, like some of the chapters are only one to two pages. So it's extremely engaging. I was waiting for my orthodontist appointment, like glued to the book, like glued to the book in the waiting room to the point where the receptionist was like, Lillian, what are you reading? I mean, you're like so into this book, I should check it out. So I think just the visceral, raw emotion of feeling like no one has your back as a kid, and then on top of that, having layers of microaggressions as well as aspects of your society or your school be really unfair. Also just feeling like angry but confused because you don't know what you're supposed to do. And I, maybe I'm projecting at this point, but I feel like a lot of times that anger just gets molded into complacency. And then as a young person, you look around and everyone's complacent. And that's what sparks Ram's proclivity to violence and feeling so satiated or so driven by his vigilante violent acts where he goes out and uses a bat to like, attack these people who are carrying out injustices. Um, so I think that dynamic is really on display here and really well done. I'm going to close with my favorite quote of the book because it really just resonated with me so much. And I think this quote just embodies what I'm trying to say about the feelings you feel as an adolescent and as someone who sees injustice around you but is confused why no one seems to care. And it also, I think, is a really honest depiction of Singapore, which in a lot of this fiction I'm reading, I see Singapore being described or components of it being shown on the page. But this writing really speaks to Singapore in a way that's true and complex. OK, so the context for this quote is that Ram is getting ready to catch a pedophile, I think, who's been hitting on young girls. He has this system with his friend Cass to figure out, you know, like bad deeds that are being done so he can try to then intervene. So he needs to go to Orchard, which is the really nice shopping street in Singapore. And he's talking about taking the bus to Orchard. There are two Singapores, the Singapore on the surface, the one I'm crossing in this bus, the Singapore with the shopping bags, the maids in tow, the doctors, the professors, the A-level certificates, the sleek cars, the stylish glass angled to form the face of a building, 
a Singapore made of unbothered citizens, unshaken and unmoved, blessed with apathy. And then there's the Singapore I roam on my bike. Boys in fighting wraps, men with alcohol leaking from pores, ladies of the night, a chopped body in a closet, a dead lawyer choking on his own blood. When I am on this bus, I am a passenger. I am part of the good Singapore, the clean Singapore, the garden city. When I ride my bike, I am a bullet shot at the city's heart. I am the knife slashing its veins open, pouring its blood onto the streets. Yes, I, 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 something about kids on bikes. I think bikes are like a huge symbol for like independence and power for a kid. Yeah, so I think that quote is a bit of a thesis for what Mile and Through the Eyes of Ram is showing, which is a Singapore that is almost like Gotham City, where all these like crimes are happening and someone needs to come in to save the day. Uh, but then, of course, it's real life, and a lot of these stories came from headlines that the author found during COVID and before, which is when he was writing the book. And yeah, again, I think that that could be done in a very heavy-handed, in a very obvious way, but it's not in this book. And there's a lot of ways to reflect on Singapore analytically, but I think telling this true and honest story is one of the best ways to do it. And it just comes across as really raw and authentic. So I would give this five stars. Uh, I, I'm super excited for anything else Mile writes. I just learned that he also did a play for Checkpoint Theater, which is a local theater called Brown Boys Don't Cry, which I don't think is running anymore, so I think I missed it. But yeah, this is definitely going to be in my top selections for Sing Lit. And I definitely recommend that you check it out. It's a bit of a heavy read. It's definitely a page turner, I feel. And I think the ending does do it justice. I like the ending. I thought it was a good ending, an apt ending. Um, but if any of you have read it, I would love to hear your thoughts on the depictions of Ram's life, the frictions he goes through, and the ending, uh, which I won't spoil. Yeah, I just think the writing is great. The writing is very crisp and very impactful and the chapters are so short I just couldn't put it down so if you read this let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video bye the cat is meowing so much Shh.